people just don't understand money because we don't teach it in this country. If people understood money, economics, politics, yeah. we'd actually vote a little differently. Well, insurance is a defense to your portfolio. So you have cash, stock, real estate, insurance, stock, mutual funds, ETFs, all that kind of fun stuff. That's your Michael Jordan. That's your growth. Then you got your real estate, that's your Scotty Pippen. Well, these are the 90s bulls, right? Bulls. Well, who was the defensive player they brought in to kill everybody? Yeah, Rodman. Rodman. So yeah. insurance is your Rodman. The guys usually with your money, you know, they might have, you know, four or five different escorts with them. What keeps a guy like you single, focused? It's simple. My reasons for success are bigger than my distractions. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Gita. Steady through the rigor. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Haley here from Dallas, Texas, and with me today here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. And also on Rumble, we got Money Man Mace from, well, Jacksonville, Florida, but now out of Orlando. Former collegiate soccer player, break dancer, bar mitzvah host, bar mitzvah host. He does it all. But now, entrepreneur in the insurance industry, Money Man Mace. Awesome. Glad you're here, brother. Appreciate having me. Thank you. So uh, talk to us, man, real quick. What's uh, What was your entrance into the insurance industry? How'd I get in? Yeah. So out of college, like everybody, I thought getting my degree is going to open up all these doors, mm -hmm. which isn't the case because there's more uh, smart, unemployed, broke people on Monster and Indeed, all these, all these places. Everyone's got the same degree that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't know what I wanted to do. Got into entertainment out of college. Did the weddings, the bar mitzvah, all the fun stuff. And it was fun. It was in Fort Lauderdale. And I uh, worked for a lot of good companies, did a lot of big parties. We did a million dollar party in, in London. Uh -huh. And someone says, who the hell's gonna do a million dollar party in London? Well, the answer is people that can. So, so, so we did a lot of fun stuff there. And in 2008, when the recession hit hard, yeah. my parents took a bad hit, my grandfather lost a lot of money, my uncle lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm smart, but I don't understand money. And they don't teach money in high school, they don't teach money in college, they don't teach money at your job. So people are always working for money, yet we don't understand it. If I asked you, what's your formal K made of? I don't know. I just checked the box. Which one? Conservative, moderate, aggressive? I don't know. People just don't understand money because we don't teach it in this country. Because that's the one interesting part that if people understood money, economics, politics, yep. we'd actually vote a little differently. We would do things differently with our money and our either way. Yeah, for sure. So I wanted to learn about that game. And um, my degree is not in economics. It's not in politics. It's not in finance. I suck at math and numbers. In fact, I came and worked the damn calculator. And uh, <laughs> good thing for the phone because I got the basic one. And I just wanted to learn. So um, I went on a couple of interviews with some companies. Not a fan of the corporate. Can't do this. Can't do that. Yeah. You know, the career, the captive agent world. Okay. And then my brother, who was a big time DJ in California, knows this guy. Uh, maybe you know him, uh, Patrick Bed David. Oh, PBD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PBD. So, yeah. He, knows, so he, knows, he knows Patrick Bed David. Uh, he's in California. And him and Patrick get me on the call and says, I want to meet you. Yeah. So I fly to LA yeah. and I go to an event and I looked at Patrick. I said, you guys do insurance? Like, I thought it was a breakdancing party. They had music, they had fun. I'm like, where's the bar? And no, this was an insurance convention. And so, so that environment was- the, like environment, environment. Was, the environment got me. And that's what it was. I did not even know what was going on, but because of the, the people, the environment, the conversations that we're having, I said, man, yeah. I want to run with guys like you. Yeah. So I said, Pat, what do I need to do? He says, you have to go back and get licensed. I said, that's great. How do you do that? He says, John, we're here in California. You got to go figure that out. So I go back to Florida, figure out how to get licensed, made a lot of mistakes. I mean, when I say a lot of mistakes, pick a mistake I made it. And it sucked. You know, friends and family weren't supportive in the beginning as that's supposed to be. And now I've learned that that's how it's supposed to be because that's what builds your character for you. And that's why, you know, you have a saying that you say, don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you, mm -hmm. right? So I had to build my character around that. I got a lot of negativity and just worked through it. Started reading the books, Went to the convention, said a seminar, I kept showing up, kept showing up, kept showing up. And uh, 13, 14 years later, you know, here we are, you know, chairman well, with the firm, yeah. with PHP, uh, you know, one of the top equity partners, one of the co-founders, and, right. and life's good. So, so, so what did you think, I mean, coming from breakdance, so your thing is like breakdance to finance. Breakdance to finance. I mean, what did you think the, okay, so what did you think that the insurance industry was about before you got in? And then what did you realize when you're on the platform of PHP in the insurance industry? I thought Jake from State Farm was going to walk in with his khakis at any minute, you know, so I had no idea what's going on. You, you think of insurance, you think of boring. You know, you watch TV. We could do, we could do insurance karaoke and we yeah, know yeah. every, you know, we are farmers. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> right, so we know all the jingles, right? They have great jingles, by the way. Yeah. But life insurance is doom and gloom. You know, if your loved one passes, I don't want to buy life insurance. Yeah, so very morbid, and more, very, very. So health insurance is sitting at a call center all day with headphones on buying leads. Yeah. And that's boring to me. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. Then you have the car insurance kind of stuff with, with uh, Jake and Geico and Flo's going to walk in with their pricing yeah. thing. And I said, I don't want to do that either. So I'm thinking that life insurance is 10 times worse because yeah. 
it's life insurance, it's death, and then mm -hmm. it's insurance because everything about insurance is an expense. Car insurance expense, homeowner's expense, renter's expense. Oh no, here we go. It's a death expense. And then I saw the environment that, that Patrick created, that uh, the company was creating. I said, wait a second, you guys do insurance. So I said, you know what? If this is how this is, I'm game. And what, what caught me was the energy, what caught me was the, the systems, what caught me was the scalability. And I, I didn't know what to expect. That was the biggest thing. So I, I walked in, not stereotyping it, not judging it, because okay. I didn't know. But I just heard, or what I saw from other things, some elbow, here we go. Yeah. But I went in with an open mind. Yeah. And uh, from what I saw, from what I experienced, I said, if this is how it is, because I went to their office a couple of times, if this is how it is, I'm all in. So I didn't know from the outside, though. I had to get into the game to really see what was going on. So, so John, you're, you're, you're Jewish by a religious background. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my favorite rabbis is Rabbi uh, Daniel Lappin. And he's said very often that disproportionately uh, people of Jewish uh, religious background are more wealthy than any other ethnic and religious uh, demographic. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, I've known you for, for a minute. You don't come from money, bro. Not at so all. So you don't come, you know, <laughs> so you're kind of like opposite of that potential typical stereotype. So yeah. what were some of the uh, economic, insurance, what are some of the financial stereotypes that even you had to overcome or even still deal with in your evolution as an entrepreneur in the insurance industry? That's a deep question, actually. Um, that's not even just the industry. That's that's the society. Uh, a lot of stereotypes with every religion, every culture, every race. You know, we're very judgmental as a society. I look at you and I start judging you, whether it's your clothes, whether it's your skin, uh, whether it's your, your car you're driving. But I'm very proud of my Jewish heritage. You know, the fact is uh, my character, who I am as a person, is values and principles. It's deep-rooted in the family. It's deep-rooted in helping. It's deep-rooted in serving. So judge what you want. But, um, yeah, we get we get stereotypes all the time. I mean, it, it, I didn't face a lot of it growing up. Mm -hmm. I think other people may have. Then when I got into the bar mitzvah thing, that was coincidence. Yep. That was just because I was a good dancer. Yeah. But most of the guys that were dancing weren't Jewish. <laughs> so, so I was the only Jewish guy that was actually working. Uh, so most of them were Italian or other things. Oh, they say, you know, they say it's okay with Jews and Italians. You know, that's the mafia, right? Because whatever the Jewish guy won't buy, the Italian's going to steal. So it works out fine. So, um, so I didn't get a lot of it growing up. We just didn't talk a lot about it. You know, Jesus was Jewish. And then Christianity came from it. So the values of principle is the same, the Old Testament, New Testament. One of my guys that works for me is a rabbi. And, uh, he, you know, David Pavlik. And sure, he, you know, sure. He's amazing as, as a person. He can connect with anybody, relate to anybody. And uh, I, I just think that religion is a foundation, but what you do with it up to that point is up to you. Your values and principles, your values and principles. Whether mm -hmm. you have religion, faith or not, uh, or religion or not, religion is just a guide. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, going back to the question, did I face a lot of prejudice stuff growing up? Not really. Do I know other people have? They have. I was watching something the other day about World War II and, uh, how all the Jews were persecuted. I think it was called glass, glass diet or clash. I can't say properly when there was a day that all the Jews were taken and yeah. literally slaughtered in one day. Yeah. And um, Hitler was out some doing something else, doing some kind of rally at night. To, oh, I've, I wasn't there. And a lot of the kind of stuff. So it, there was a lot of persecution and prejudice in history. Yes. Um, personally, I didn't see a lot of it growing up, though. Gotcha. When you're coming into the uh, insurance world, now you don't have a background in finance. Mm -hmm. So what did you do to, you know, everybody knows you in the company. You, you, you can't find a client that's either not going to like you or do business with you. I mean, you I know the products in and, in and out. Uh, you got a, a training class on uh, teaching other agents and news called the Divine Nine. Mm -hmm. uh, you've built offices across the country. Uh, you've got offices in Florida, you built other people. That's, so it's just not you becoming successful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, people around you becoming successful. Your brother's becoming successful. Yeah. You just got engaged. How did you start picking up your knowledge with the insurance industry and the power of what financial products and services can do? <laughs> um, well, it's funny. Dina Fernanda, probably the best uh, engagement uh, proposal ever in history yes, at, at yes. MGM at, on stage. Yeah. You know, Dean. That's historic. You know, Dean and Fernanda come from DJing. Next month, they're making eighty five thousand in a month. So, good thing he proposed. But um, here's what happened. So, I get into the business, and we talk a lot about producer versus recruiter. Why do you recruit so much? And I realized it's just like in real estate. There's producers, and then there's uh, brokers. Mm -hmm. And who makes more money? The the broker does because they get a piece of all the sales. I said, well, that makes sense to me. And in our, in our platform, it's the same thing. I want to have an agency, not just be an agent chasing sales. Uh, but I do want to sell as well. I need to know what I'm doing. Yep. So <clears throat> I wanted to learn about product. I get on the call, and I'm not going to say the name of the company. 
I get on the call with the carrier that we have at the time, and they put a wholesaler on and someone else with me. And it wasn't it wasn't Zoom, it was some kind of shared screen. Okay. And he's teaching me how to do things, and I'm asking what a surrender charge is. At the, I'm brand new, by the yeah, way. Yeah. All right? I like have no idea what green. a surrender charge is when you you know what you have access to in a universal type policy. Yep. And I had no idea. So, <laughs> so I start asking him, what is a surrender charge and how does it work? And then he, he starts explaining. He says, what's your title in the company? He gave my title. I'm the director of expansion for the state of Florida. What a bullshit title I just made <laughs> up. Like, I have no idea what's going on. So we're making up these titles to sound fancy. And... For about 20 minutes, we're going back and forth. And I'm asking really basic questions because I don't know product yet, but I want to learn. Yeah. And I say, guys, thank you so much for your time. It was a 30 minute, 40 minute call, something like that. And then I get off the, the Zoom at the time. It was mm -hmm. called Zoom, but something like it. But their chat box was still open. And they start talking shit about me. Really? Oh, this guy's the director of so-and-so. I feel scared and da 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 And I sat there wow. for about 15 minutes. And they're going, they're, like, they're laughing on my account. And they're going back and forth. I sat there. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. They're and still going. They're still going. And then eventually hung up. So I waited about five, 10 minutes. And I called the guy. Mm -hmm. I got his number. Okay. I called him directly. I said, Mr. So I left a message and pick up. I said, so-and-so, listen, I want to thank you for taking time to help a new agent like myself learn how to understand this business. And I read back everything that he wrote down. <laughs> Just for the record, I do know dot, dot, dot. However, I was asking that and I went through it. And I said, by the way, you're an asshole. Click. <laughs> yeah. So he Did calls he call me back. back. Okay. He actually, he called me back and he said, um, um, I said, stop. You're just embarrassed because you got caught. Thank you again for helping me, but you're an asshole. Click. <laughs> and that was the end of it. And I said, from that point on, I got to study this stuff and I got to master my craft. Uh, but I got to master it faster than the average person. Did you feel like a certain level of embarrassment that you didn't want to face? A hundred percent. You did. Okay. I felt very embarrassed. Uh, but at the same time is I forgave myself faster because I'm new. Yeah. I'm a freaking rookie. I'm not supposed yeah. to know what the 10-year guy knows. Yeah. And I tell that to the agents today. It's like, guys, relax. You're a freshman. Stop worrying about senior classes. You're in, you're in math 101. Yeah. You don't need calculus yet. Yeah. Learn one plus one first. Yeah. So insurance is a lot of moving parts. You know, there's term, return of premium. Then there's permanent. Then there's everything else. Executive bonus plans. Then you get the key, man. Then you get a split. There's a lot to learn people don't realize. So I said, I'm gonna learn this. So I started reading every book that I could read, uh, not just on insurance, but on money, finance, economics, mm -hmm. and, and just understanding the flow of how things work, why 401ks came out, why Universal went to VUL to IUL, why, how do interest rates work? I wanted to understand money. Yep. And that's one of the benefits of being with PHP and, and in the industry is yep. that we don't just teach one thing. Yep. Here's how things work. Here's yep. a business, entrepreneurship. So we was talk about, We'll teach you sales, which is asking questions, solving problems. We'll teach you about entrepreneurship, which is transferable to any business. And then you'll have a platform to do it using our technology, but also you're gonna learn about the money game. Yep. And that's what Money yep. Smart Movement's about. For We're sure. gonna teach you about money and life and values and principles. So uh, yeah, I just had to do a lot of study and a lot of reading, a lot of courses, yep. a lot of extra stuff that people didn't even know that I did. Yep, so um, fast forward, yeah. you know, after you started 12, you know, almost 13 years later, uh, I think you just closed uh, there's Life Insurance Awareness Month. So I think you just closed the second biggest policy in the history of PHP agency, yeah. which was a $9 million life insurance policy. So without naming names, um, can you kind of give us a quick case study in why a $9 million policy and what they were funding it for yeah. and why they're buying well, first, it? first, I have to give credit to Fernanda. You know, soon to be Fernanda Mason, Dean's fiance. <laughs> Uh, because she's the one that really built this case up. Okay. She was the one that was so prospecting. So you weren't buying leads for- was it, No, we weren't buying. No, listen, no one that has any real money is going to put the name on a lead list. Let's just call it kids, <laughs> right? So this is through a relationship. Sure. And it was a, a relationship that took time to build. And then for, there's a difference between smart and wise. You could be very smart, but there's a saying, you be smart, I'll be rich. Uh, Fernando was very wise. She knows that I have experience in the business with more affluent, higher net worth. So it's easier for me to talk about different things that maybe most agents don't know. Okay. She did her part. She set it up. And then uh, she, she uh, brought me in and we spoke. And then literally the, the person and I hit it off, went through the questions. They said, this is amazing. I'm all in. And then what's interesting is we, we applied for a company that declined this person for something very simple. And um, we said, you know what? We're not going to stop here. We're going to figure this out for you. Because part of being a brokerage like we are in IMO, FMO, we have options. Yeah. We're not just locked into one company. Correct. So we shopped around a little bit. I called the, some senior underwriters, got them on the phone, went through the process. And, and next thing you know, they said, yeah, we'll take a look at the case. Spoke with the client. They said, let's do it. 
And uh, next thing you know, about two or three weeks later, everything was done. And uh, that was that. So Fernanda gets the credit. Nice. And I just helped close it. So so was the case, was it like an estate planning case? Was it a cash accumulator? Was it a uh, banking no, this was, case? Uh, it was, <laughs> I think infinite banking's got a little out of control on TikTok. A lot of people have no idea what the hell they're doing with that damn thing. I'm telling you, it's... Oh, I'm going to put $200 a month in. No, you're not. No, this is, oh, no. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing this for, for long-term cash accumulation. The client wants to maximize the tax advantages instead of cash permanent life insurance. Yeah. So she's dumping in a large lump sum every year for about 10 years. And then uh, and, and it's done. It's completely paid for. And then the 11th year, what people don't realize, and here's a little secret of the sauce I'm looking to, but you can actually lower the death benefit without causing any type of tax consequence. Yep. And by dropping the death benefit, you're lowering the cost of insurance as long term, which allows the cash value just to spike. And it's yep. and I, you look at the illustration and it pops. And we ran it very conservatively. A lot of agents screw up because they try to oversell it. No, insurance is a defense to your portfolio. So if you have cash, stock, real estate, insurance, you know, uh, stock, mutual funds, ETFs, all that kind of fun stuff, that's your Michael Jordan, that's your growth. Then you got your real estate, that's your Scotty Pippen. Well, these are the 90s bulls right there. These are the 90s bulls, yeah, our bulls, right? That's right. Well, who is the defensive player they brought in to kill everybody? Yeah, Rodman. Rodman. So yeah. insurance is your Rodman of your portfolio. And uh, when Pippen bitched out with his ankle thing, real estate bitched out in 2008, who stepped in? Dennis Rodman did. Who's never lost any money? Insurance. So insurance is part of the portfolio. She likes it. Um, so that's kind of what happened with that case. Congratulations, man. By the way, uh, by the way, Pippen's still one of my favorite players, just for the record. Yeah. yeah. You're watching Pippen. I still love you, bro. But come on, dude. Come on. You should have you played. We love you, though. We love yeah. you. Still one of the greatest players ever. That's it. Bro, tell us, if you don't mind being transparent. I mean, the last 90 days, you've kind of made a lot of money. What, what have you made in the last 90 days? Cash flies from this industry, from the company. Jeez. Um, almost 354, something like that. In the last three months. Yeah. Okay, so a guy like you making that much money, driving a Lamborghini, living in a penthouse downtown Orlando, you're a single dude. We travel across the world. We go to France, we go to Monaco, we go to Cabo, we go to Tulum, we go to Costa Rica, right? All these places we go to across the world, there's a bunch of married couples, but you're the single guy amongst us. Thanks. So I, I'm, I'm just curious, <laughs> man. Uh, and by, by the way, salute to you because I've never seen you, you know, you know, look at women cross-eyed and you've always been an honorable and respectable dude when it comes to women. So wh where does that come from? And because, you know, guys usually with your money, you know, they might have, you know, four or five different escorts with them or four or five different uh, girlfriends with them, whatever the case may be. What keeps a guy like you single, focused on whatever it is, endeavor that you got? And uh, it, it, seems like you're, it seems like you're waiting for the right woman to, to marry and, and, and enjoy that portion with. Yeah. It's simple. My reasons for success are bigger than my distractions. Yeah, the temptation is never going away. Whether you're married or not, uh, and, and it's never going to go away, those distractions. You just got to make better decisions. So if you're single, making a lot of money, okay. Just make better decisions. You just have more choices, so, so mm -hmm. choose wisely. Values and principles, you know, my, my parents have been married over 50 plus years. You know, Dina and Fernanda have been together 13 plus years. So I've been around good examples of people staying together. In my position in the company as well, being a face of the company, it's also a responsibility I take on. So between having responsibility, being held accountable, being clear about what I want, what I want my life to look like, I do my best. I'm not perfect, but I do my best to make better decisions when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. When we go to uh, Paris, did we all go out, have a good time, have some champagne? Yeah. Did we do some, we, where did we go? <laughs> we went on the cruise and then we went on to the, the, to the, the, the bike thing and yeah. we, we, had, we had a good time. <laughs> so it's not like we're, we're living in, in, a, in a monastery or anything like that. Yeah. But um, no, we, we, we built this business yeah. off of more values and principles. I wanna build my life off more values and principles that are deep rooted um, of, of being the next best version of myself. Yeah. And also in leadership, how can I lead if I don't do it myself? I have to do it myself, otherwise I'm a hypocrite. Yep. So I, I guess, I hope, I hope that answers no, your no, question. No, no, you're, you're very wise. I, uh, I was doing, uh, was, was Tommy Harris, yeah, I, was, I was with Tommy Harris a couple weeks ago, he was a former uh, first round draft pick of the Bears, but uh, we were having steaks and Jesse was, Milton was there. Yeah. And he said something to me, I've met many men chasing women and they lose money, but I've never met a man that lost a woman chasing money. Yeah. So, you know, you got to pick your poison, you know, especially in this day and age where it seems like men validate themselves with the cars they drive, the boats they're on, and the women they're surrounded yeah. with. That's self-esteem. There's a difference between being a, a nice guy and a kind man. Nice guys are pushovers. 
women don't want pushovers. A kind man is a kind man. They have a good heart. They take care of the family, that provider in the Bible. The man takes care of the family. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't stand, you know, GoFundMe. GoFundMe is not, uh, <laughs> GoFundMe is not in the Bible anywhere. Mm -hmm. So years ago in Jacksonville, I was going through a downtime in my life. Very strange. And I was making a couple hundred thousand a year at the mm -hmm. time. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I was broke. But I was just not where I wanted to be mentally. Uh, the business wasn't where I thought it should have been. And uh, I was telling somebody, I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go buy a Ferrari. No one in the mood for it. Some people go to, you know, Macy's, buy a shirt. I'm going to go buy a Ferrari. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> it sounds so stupid, I know. And he says, John, you're not in the right state to buy a Ferrari. You're just covering up your depression. You're just covering up how you really, who, your yeah. self-esteem. You have a self-esteem yeah. issue, buddy. I said, damn it. He's right. So I needed to wait to purchase anything like that material item until I was happy with myself. I actually talked about this a while back. Good for you. And um, I said, all right, I'm gonna work on myself. So I started working on me, yeah. working on me, started letting go, yeah. uh, letting go of resentment, anger, frustration, grief, letting go, all that kind of crap. And um, when I was ready, mm -hmm. then I had some fun. So yeah, last year, you know, last year, yeah, last year, I was in, in the market, I was getting rid of my R8. I'm like, you know what, I wanna buy something I've always wanted to get. Let me see if there's a Lambo on the market. Mm -hmm. So I found a Lambo, it's got 100,000 of upgrades, by the way. I got it with the upgrades, it's sick. And uh, it's got all these, you know, it's got a cup holder, first off. If you, if you have a Lambo, if you have a Lambo, you go, yeah, we have a cup holder. It's a $10,000 okay. upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's crazy. So, but I got the Lambo because I was ready for the Lambo and yeah. I want the Lambo. It was not to impress anybody. Uh, I also have uh, a truck that I think you may be sure. familiar yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so no. I got the same truck you got because <laughs> no, Swazo right. sold me on it. We're driving around <laughs> in it. Here, take it. And then Swazo hits it. He's like, ooh, this definitely ain't the range. I'm like, it's that fast? He's like, it's that fast. I said, I need to get a truck for deduction. <laughs> so I go home on the same damn Over truck. Over 6,000 pounds. Yeah, oh, man. yeah. So GLS AMG. Yeah. And what's funny is anyone that I talk to, any girls that I come across, they love the truck. They don't give a crap about the Lambo. <laughs> It's hilarious. So it's almost like guys think, oh, I'm going to go press the girls. By the way, is that the girl you really want to attract in your life yeah. that cares about your freaking money? So what happens when you have no money? Now what? You want to ride or die girl. You want to ride or die chick that's going to be with you no matter what. And I think, honestly, the easiest time is to meet a girl when you are broke and see how she handles that yeah. on the way up. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's, it is what it is. But now when you have money, if you're trying to impress people with money, that's who you're attracting. You're, you're attracting materialistic people in your life. Yeah. Uh, money gives you choices. It's all it should do. Yep. You want to help your parents out? You can't do it being broke. Yep. But if you have money, you can help your family out. You know, you did something great for your parents. You know, dad's in, in, in the, uh, yeah. the, the nursing home. Yeah, right. It's almost like a, a cruise, yeah, right. a, cruise a cruise ship. ship in, in right? senior living center. So yep. that's because you have finances in order. Yep. You can do that. You can't do that being broke. Yep. So now that we're in a certain situation financially, you bought the roles because you wanted the roles because it's fun to you. Yeah. And boys with our toys, it's that we're never yeah, growing yeah, up. Yeah, our yeah, toys yeah. just get more expensive. <laughs> so it's just a toy. It's a yeah. fun thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a stress relief. But it's, it shouldn't be a mask to cover up who we are. If our self-esteem is taking a hit, then we need to go work on that. Yep. And I did a lot of work on that, reading a lot of books, a lot, a lot of this and that and the other. And it's been years. It's great. What have you noticed with your career? You know, working together with... Uh, not only PHP, but also more specifically with my wife and I. What has mm -hmm. been a difference in your career? What have you seen as a shift? Is it your demeanors, your 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 your, your thought process? It, what is is it systems? What have you seen as a difference when when you started working together with us uh, uh, in, in 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 PHP? How much time we got? If you if I, if I say the word everything, uh, okay. So let's go back in history when you got started in the company because I got started in '09. You guys started in, in 15. 15 yeah. So when people think, oh, the people in the beginning make all the money, it's a bunch of bullshit, you're just lazy. So you came in and just cleaned up. You and Sheena just cleaned up. And when I was in Jacksonville, you guys would come in, just come out of the kindness of your heart. You were not getting paid. You were making no money off of anything. You just came to help out because you mm -hmm. were a company person. And it got to a point where I was going, it was at the same time I was thinking about the Lambo, or the, uh, the Ferrari rather. Okay. Same, the same downside in my, in my lifestyle. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't structured. Uh, I wasn't organized. I was uh, afraid of crucial conversations. I was very um, passive aggressive, very conflict avoidance. All these things, I was Mr. Nice Guy. Okay. And I needed help. And I knew I needed help. And, and the thing is, when people get started with the company, they're relying on me to come through as a leader. And I was letting them down. And that was taking all that pressure. So when we started working together, when you guys started working, and we said, hey, can we work together and partner? Mm -hmm. You said, absolutely. And we started working with you guys. 
within 90 days, I hit a big, big promotion, if you remember. That's right. Right? Because we had accountability. So the first thing you guys bring to the team is accountability. Uh, you bring responsibility and organization. So I had structure now in my business. Finally, I had structure. I had systems. I had accountability. I had leverage. Uh, because you guys were not afraid of crucial conversations or tough conversations. Where the conversation I was having a challenge having, you'd work with me, you'd process it with me. And then I'd have that kind of, and back and forth. So a level of accountability, I think, is the first thing. And every major athlete, whether it's Jordan, Kobe, anyone had a coach that held them accountable. Uh, I think when Tim Grover in his book, after Michael Jordan won a game, he would just say, what do you want? He would just say two numbers, six to seven. And they just won. But yeah. that's Tim Grover holding Michael Jordan accountable. Six or seven means what time we meeting at the gym. Uh, so accountability, organization, structure, uh, culture. I think you and Sheena have change the game when it comes to culture uh one i mean you got uh, uncle nearest here we're having a little sip yeah, of whiskey yeah, yeah. but also cigars you brought the whole cigar thing to the game first time you and i were really hanging out was in, in dubai, dubai yeah. <laughs> right, we're hanging out sweating our butt off <laughs> in, in like 700 degree weather at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> we're at the pool 11 o'clock at night and still 700 degrees but we're in dubai and i'm like i'm having a cigar i'm like this is cool yeah. and then we have cigar talk and what's funny is we go on vacation mm -hmm. we went to paris and monaco this year we went to tulum this year we went to cabo san lucas this year all paid for by the company you know the most fun i had was having cigars at 11 o'clock at night. We always look forward to cigar time. Yeah, yeah. And that's something you brought to the company. And no one was doing that before you guys got here. That's, that's you guys get the credit for yeah. that. And, and what's nice is you don't just all, uh, welcome anyone that's just on your team. You welcome the company. So you're company people. So you set a new, new standard for, hey, whether you're, you're money smart movement or not, we still represent mm -hmm. the same brand, same colors. Let's work together because, yep. you know, the same race you care about is the human race. Sure. And um, I think yep. you just brought a level of, of culture, a lot of, a lot of fun. Yep. I think uh, we needed, we needed yeah. to spark that up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the Jordans you did. Sure. You know I mean? <laughs> Everything's different. So, yeah. so accountability, culture, uh, but you've actually helped me, and this is me to you, whether on camera or not, you've heard me say this to you. You've helped me become a better man and a better version of myself. Uh, you've called me out on my own bullshit sometimes. Uh, we've had some tough talks, some late night talks. And uh, I remember one time, I keep bringing up the same thing over and over again. He said, John, when are you going to stop talking about this? I said, right now. <laughs> so I'll, I'll throw myself under the bus. You don't got to. But uh, I am where I'm at because of several people in my life. You know, Patrick, but David being one of them majorly. But you're up there as well. So I give you I a lot of credit. And that's, that's, that's heartfelt. Well, it's a pleasure working together with you, John. Um, now, if, if somebody's watching this and say, you know what, I really like that guy, John. I really like what he's talking about in the insurance industry, the culture. He, they, you know, they, they talk about some things I align with. What, what, okay, as I wrap up, what type of person do you have fun working together with? I and mean, what type of person works with a John Mason? And what advice would you give them if they're going to consider entrepreneurs, they're going to consider becoming an, in, uh, an entrepreneurial uh, independent agent here in our platform? You know, what, what type of person is that? There's different people that I'm working with now that are just easy to work with. There's a guy named Josh Waxman. He's in Miami right now. Wax. Right? He's, you know, 26 years yeah. old. He's already making, you know, 60, 70 grand a month. Like, he's already doing very well as it is. But he sees the opportunity in the insurance very platform. Very humble, too. Very humble. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, I, and he came to Orlando, brought him around to some of my friends. Everyone loves him. He's just a likable yeah, kind of guy. Humble and smart, too. Very smart. Yeah. Very smart. And, you know, and I always tell people, as long as you stay coachable, don't let the recognition get to your head, right? So... You know, he's already making very good money, yeah. especially someone his age, but he sees the opportunity in insurance. He sees the residuals, the team building, the culture, the environment, not just the money. Yeah. So he's working with us and he's transitioning a little bit more, you know, even more full time a little bit. But he's easy to work with because he asks questions and then he takes direction immediately. So we call them ask holes, right? <laughs> ask holes are guys that just ask questions, but don't do a damn thing. <laughs> and ask the same question again the next time. And the same thing, right? So he's one of the guys that applies it and implements it immediately. My brother and Fernando are the same way. So Dean and Fernando got so good at rebuttals because they would ask me questions. I say, Dean, just send me a screenshot. I'd write it back. He'd save it on his phone and then study it. So he's a, a student of the business. So I'm looking for not yeah. just someone who asks questions, takes direction, who's humble, but someone who actually... Uh, is coachable, but studies their craft. They yep. want to. They want to. They want to get better at it. They show up. They're consistent. They keep their word. Yep. You know, I don't mind if you ask why, but let's process it together, and then go implement. Yep. And uh, I, I think coachability is a big thing. Clarity is going to happen over time. Not a lot of people are clear about what they want, but if they can just at least get through one week at a time, yeah. they'll get more clear as they get better. Uh, Self motivated. I'm not your babysitter. 
I'll re-remind you why you get started. But if I have to call you every morning to wake your ass up, <laughs> I'm mean, like, come on, dude. Your family's yeah. relying on you. People are relying on you. Let's go. Uh, you can't be lazy around us. Uh, discipline happens over time, I think. And obviously with military background mm -hmm. or sports backgrounds, certain backgrounds, discipline's ingrained in you. Mm -hmm. but yeah, because yeah. when you first go to military, you're typically not disciplined. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. become. True. So I'm very patient with people uh, that when they get started, they have a big why, I'll work with them. People that I stay away from, though, are the big talkers. And no action takers. Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk no action. Their ego's bigger than their <laughs> bank account. Oh, I'm the best sales guy. What do you make a year? 120. Bro, that guy made it last month. Sit down. <laughs> like, if you're such the best sales guy, why are you not making 1.2 yet? What's going on with the ego? It's your ego. So a lot of people have ego because they have low self-esteem, and that covers it up. So it's hard to deal with those guys because yeah. they, they talk a big game. They do very little. Mm -hmm. um, someone walks in, I'm the, and they say I'm the number one sales guy. In what world? Like, let's just call it like it is. What world are you living in, bro? You make six figures a year. We got guys making six figures a month. They even make six figures a week. So... Humble yourself a little bit, dude. I do well, but even I know I don't make the most money in the world. Like, let's chill for a second. So I look for coachability. I look for humility. Uh, I look for people that to say, listen, I do well, but I want to get better. Um, action takers. They ask questions. They show up. Uh, but I also look at their character, and that's going to be revealed over time. Yep. How do you handle pressure? So when someone says no to you, what happens? When someone quits on you, what happens? Uh, you know, when, when you have nothing going on, how do you handle it? When yeah. you fall, yeah. and I'm looking, all right, are they getting up? Oh, they're crying and playing victim. Can't work with them. Gotcha. Got to move on. Love them, but can't work with them. Uh, I work with those that can that can take a beating and keep coming back because I'll teach you how to block, yeah. and then I'll teach you how to counter. So very cool. Well, there you have it. That's John Mason. He went from break dance to finance. Mm -hmm. If you want to find more information about John Mason, or some of you may potentially want to say, Hey, John, take a look at my insurance portfolio. Look at what's going on with my finances. What's going on with my career. I want to find a way to enter the insurance industry too. So make sure you follow John Mason on Instagram. All the links are here at the bottom of the description. And uh, if you watch this video, you found value in John Mason's uh, conversation with myself, please put your feedback in the comment section below. You got questions, you got feedback, you agree, you don't agree. We want to hear about it, put it in the comment section below. So John, I appreciate you for jumping on here, man, and I having this conversation. It. Thanks for the questions. <laughs> <laughs> If you're watching this and uh, you found value, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of John Mason, I'm your mighty smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be mighty smart today.